Hello everybody. Um, almost at a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate all you guys' support and stuff like that. Uh, I wanted to talk to you today about D bows, ASL long bows, hand shock, and their shootability. That's what this video is about. It's going to be hopefully not very long video. Uh, okay, this is not a D bow. All right. This is an ASL longbow. A D-bow refers to the cross section of the limb, meaning the belly of the bow, which is the side of the bow facing you when you hold it, is rounded, okay? That's more characteristic of an English longbow. And then the, be the back of the bow is flat, but, but a D-bow would be rounded on the belly, meaning if you cut this limb, cross section out of it and you looked at it from the profile side it would look like a D. That's the that's where D bow came from. Now some people kind of misunderstand and think well the way this is strong then the way the limbs are shaped that it's it's a D bow or, or, or whatever it's that's not that's just not where that originated from. Whether it matters to you or not it's you know it's not that big a deal but that's actually where that came from. Uh, this is an ASL longbow. This act this actually is a Northern Miss Shelton uh, takedown actually and uh, <clears throat> this is the one I'm currently in love with so <laughs> anyway shootability uh, well let's talk about hand shock first I made a whole video about hand shock hand shock is a result of, <clears throat> of uh, the wrong arrow brace height may be off or both uh, a cheaply made bow where the limb tips are super wide, super thick, super heavy, okay? When it, the, the heavier these limb tips get, whenever you shoot that bow, it's a lot of excessive vibration in there, okay? And there, I, I would assume that some people shooting a, a, a not so well crafted longbow that's got real heavy limb tips and things like that, and they got the wrong arrows, I could imagine that that would be a horrible shooting experience and it and the the word hand shock like I explained in my other video doesn't really characterize uh, what it is uh, I don't know who came up with that I wish they hadn't have said that but anyway it's it's more uh, characterized as recoil all bows have recoil recurves long bows ASL bows hybrid long bows whatever they all have a certain amount of recoil the way that you, these bows right here uh, I can tell you this American semi longbow or hill style bow, if you will, uh, will vibrate if you have the wrong arrow or in the brace heights off and stuff like that. If you're shooting lightweight carbon arrows or something like that, uh, that are not spined properly, stuff like that, with little lightweight points trying to get speed out of this bow, this bow is not going to be a very good shooting experience for you because it's just it's creating way too much vibration when the bow is coming back to brace. Uh, one of the biggest things that can cause that recoil or vibration is the grip. This is very, very important, okay? You, you never want to grip this bow with a straight wrist like that, okay? I'm trying to, trying to show it as best I can. You never hold this bow like that. The center of this bow, actually, the way it's tillered, the way the bow is built, the center of this bow is, uh, is actually about right here somewhere, so, a little bit below this shelf, maybe an inch or so, depending on the bow you're, but right in there somewhere. So to mitigate that, you take a full grip, okay? You don't grip it as tight as you can, and there's no point in that. You don't have to do that, but you do hold on to the bow. And what you end up happening, what ends up happening, and I'm trying to get close to the camera here where you can see, is that the back of, the back of this handle right here is riding right down this line of your hand right here, all the way to the heel of your hand to here. So you have pretty much even pressure. When you draw the bow, there's even pressure throughout that whole uh, palm of your hand, okay? This is not gonna feel good because number one, you're throwing the limbs out of time whenever it returns to brace and it's going to cause a, a excessive vibration. That's the reason why a lot of these hybrid longbows and recurves and stuff like that have a very deep dished handle in there, uh, moving that hand forward and so on and so forth. There's a lot of reasons for it, but this type bow, you can't shoot it like that. The handle is this long for a reason. You want to use all of it whenever you shoot your bow. 
So the the to to someone for someone to blanketly say that these bows have too much hand shock or they recoil too much or they vibrate too much or whatever is just not true. It, it's just not. Um, you have to have the, the a proper weight arrow for it. Okay, it's fine properly. Uh, heavier arrow like a hunting weight arrow. That's, these bows are not designed to shoot little 200 grain arrows out of a 55 or 60 pound bow. It's gonna, not going to feel well. As a matter of fact, in, in essence, what you're doing when you shoot something that's too light for this bow, to, the arrow weight is too light for this bow. You, you're you're in essence dry firing that bow, and I can't imagine that equipment lasting very long. Uh, it may last a very long time, but one day it might blow up on you. Uh, shootability. These bows, once you have all of those key parts to this uh, uh, in place, proper arrow, proper point weight, overall arrow weight, brace height, and a proper grip, these bows are extremely accurate, as proven by many people like Howard Hill and, and folks like that. Uh, I, myself, I shoot plenty accurate, I'm a hunter, Okay, so I don't I don't shoot at ten rings all the time, but the way I practice shooting at random distances and stuff like that, uh, this bow is exceedingly accurate. It's more accurate than I am. So the shootability of it, using the proper grip, using a, a, the proper weight arrow and a proper brace height, and a well-made bow. Okay, these the, the shooting experience or the shootability of this is awesome. It's just as smooth and fun to shoot as any bow that, that ever was. Again, I'll, I'll, I'm going to reiterate something. A, a, a bow that is not made properly in, in this configuration, something with really heavy tips, something with you know tip overlays and the tips are super wide right out to the string grooves and stuff like that, uh, and also the taper of the laminations that are in the limbs, the way, the way this bow is going to, that's the way this bow is going to react when you shoot. All those things affect the recoil and the shootability. Um, now you can tone that down a little bit with maybe a heavier arrow or something like that, but there's no comparison between a, a bow that's not well made versus a bow that's made by an expert bowyer. Okay? Um, now, a lot of guys, for whatever reason, uh, they can't or don't want to afford uh, you know, a, a, a bow that's six, seven hundred dollars. Uh, that you know, they opt for something like a production bow or whatever. There are ways to, to to calm that down some. Okay, but you can't judge all bows, all ASL long bows or heel style bows, by something that is a production bow that's not tuned very well and you got the wrong arrows in it. So uh, that's. That's the whole point of this, this little conversation right here. Shootability of these bows is awesome. I mean, they're, they're, they're just great, fun to shoot. They're just as smooth as they can be when they're set up properly. And again, with the D bow, just for informational purposes, it's not this bow, it's the old English style long bow or some self bows that are, that are round on the belly of the bow, that meaning the side of the bow that's facing you and flat on the front. The cross section of the limb is what makes that a D bow, not when it's strung up. Okay, so when somebody's talking about that, uh, you know, it, and it's not really semantics. That's a fact. That's just what that's what it is. So, uh, just wanted to try to clear that up for a few people. And and uh, if you're a subscriber already and you hadn't seen it yet, go in there and look for that hand shock video. I talk extensively about that. Uh, and if you're new to the channel, you never you're not a subscriber. Please do like the video. And then you can scroll down through my videos and find that hand shock video and I talk about that for a good 15 minutes about how what hand shock is or is not and uh, how to mitigate it. So I hope you enjoyed this video guys and uh, please like and share and I appreciate appreciate all your support.